Hi, it's Sarah Davison here and welcome to my show. Now, if you have a question that you would like me to answer on any kind of relationship, breakup, divorce situation, then do email me and I'll tell you how to do that and contact me at the end of the show so you can get your questions answered. Now, recently I had an email in from, actually from quite a few of you, asking about how do you travel as a single parent? I know some of you have seen on my Instagram page that I've been travelling with my son on my own to the Maldives recently. Now I do travel a lot, I love travelling and just because I'm single it doesn't stop me from getting out there and exploring the world and doing the things that I really want to do. Now I know that a lot of you have said that it puts you off being on your own and travelling and I know how difficult it can be, believe you me, the first few times I did it, I remember when my son was three. I had been separated, I was still in the midst of the divorce, but I was separated for over a year at this point and I was trying to get a break, I needed a break, I wanted some sun and you know I hadn't been away for a long time, the divorce had been incredibly stressful as I know a lot of you can relate to, so I decided to, to pack a bag and we headed off to Barbados, just the two of us. Now, as a single woman traveling to the Caribbean, I guess you've got to be super careful. You've got to pick the resort where you're going to feel safe. So don't go anywhere where you're out on your own or maybe you're the only foreigner around. Pick somewhere where it's a good, well-established hotel where they've got good facilities. And if you're worried about hospitals and things like that, then just inquire and make sure there's somewhere nearby that if there was something that went wrong that you would be looked after. Now, I always pick somewhere where there's loads to do. So my son is now 10, he likes doing all sorts of things. Um, one of the things that we've just done recently on our trip was scuba diving. I've been diving for years and years, like over 20 years. Uh, and now it's great because my son's really into it too, so he wanted to, to do some diving too. But what is it that your child likes to do? Maybe they like to play football, maybe they like tennis, maybe they're just happy swimming around in a swimming pool or whatever it is for them. So it's really important because when you go away as a single parent, you want a break too, right? Yeah, believe you me, I know. And for many years when I was traveling with my son on my own, I'd take a book, but I'd never get the chance to read it. Yeah, you've got to watch where your child is. Uh, I didn't feel comfortable putting him into kids club. It was never really my son's thing anyway. Um, and because I just had one kid, it was hard just to leave them in kids club. So uh, quite often we would make an effort to meet people and go up and talk to people. Now I can hear you now saying, Sarah, I can't talk to people on holiday, you must be crazy. Now this works for, for men and women, you know, whether you're a single dad or a single mum, when you go away and you're, you've got children with you, ideally, you know, you want them to make some friends, they've got someone to interact with. Uh, you yeah, know, my son has quite a selective list, it has to be a boy, it has to be around the same age, um, and have to be interested in similar things. So, you know, sometimes it can be a bit tricky. Uh, and options can be limited when you're in a, in a small resort. But actually being friendly and smiling, I always make it a priority anyway to make sure I get to know the hotel staff. It's kind of a safety thing, I think. So if anything did go wrong or I did need help, then there would be someone there that I would know who would know I was there with my son on my own and, and be able to offer advice and help. It also makes you feel a bit more relaxed if there's people around that know you, recognize you, you know, the same morning. But you know, you're never gonna get away from that stigma. You know, people say to me, well, how do you do it? Isn't it embarrassing? And I've been doing it for a long time now, so not really embarrassing anymore, but you have to learn to cope with the stereotypes that people still carry around with them. And you'll find this even in the hotels and stuff. You know, I remember once I actually was traveling and we went up, me and my son arrived at a hotel, just the two of us, walked up to the door, and the lady at the door of the hotel who weren't there, she came out to greet us and she said, oh, hi. And then she said, oh, where's daddy? And my son was like, well, he's not here. And then I had to explain, you know, well, I'm happily divorced and, you know, it's just the two of us and, you know, really excited. As long as it doesn't knock you off balance, then usually it will be okay for them too. You know, the awkward bit is when they look embarrassed or, even sorry for you. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's like, no, no, don't be. I'm, I'm really happy to be here on my own. We do some fun stuff and just really looking forward to it. And they go, oh, okay, great. You know, last, uh, last week when we were away, one of the Maldivian guys on the boat said to me, well, where's the rest of your family? I was like, well, <laughs> this is my family, you know? I mean, me and my son, we live together at home and, you know, I'm happily divorced. And he was like, oh, right, okay. 
uh, another American family that we met, they asked me, um, oh, is your husband at home? And I was like, no, don't have one of those, but that's okay, I'm happy, I'm here with my son, and you know, it's amazing what fun we're having, just the two of us. And also, I think, you've kind of got to get past those stereotypes, because there are people there looking at you, and whilst you think, gosh, are they looking at me feeling sorry for me? Do they feel, you know, maybe threatened by me being here on my own with my son? Or, you don't know what it is that they're thinking, but sometimes people aren't particularly friendly. But I had this experience uh, when my son was three. I was telling you about at the beginning where I was saying we went off on our own. We were staying in Barbados in a hotel there. And it was a nice, nice hotel. Um, we didn't go outside of the hotel resort. So I felt safer in the hotel. But you know, we were by the pool and my son was playing in the, in the baby pool. And this lady came up to me. And she came up to my son bed. And I was on the sun bed by the edge of the, of the baby pool. And my son had his arm bands and was like kicking around. It was only like literally like that deep anyway. Um, and she came up to me and she said, excuse me, uh, can, I, can I ask you a question? And I sort of looked up from reading my book and kind of watching my son and I was like, uh, yeah. Thinking, oh gosh, what is she gonna say? And she said, are you here on your own with your son? And pointed into the swimming pool. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, what? So just you and him? Nobody else. I said, yeah. Uh, she said, so no husband, no other children to clear up after, just you and your son. And I laughed at this point. I said, yeah, just me and, and my son. And she looked at me and she said, oh, I am so jealous. That sounds perfect. She said, I'm having a nightmare. My husband keeps shouting at me. We're not getting on. We haven't got on for years. And the kids, one of them's ill, the other one's always upset, and the other two, I just argue all the time. She said, oh, your holiday sounds just what I need. It sounds like heaven. And then with that, I heard her husband shout, oi, come over here. And she said, see, see what I mean? Not a minute's peace. And she turned around, she walked off. And I thought, wow, you know, I, I hadn't thought of it that way, that people would look at us traveling on our own and go, wow, that looks cool. Or well, that looks perfect. Or wow, I could really, yeah, I could really do with a break like that. So, yeah, it taught me a lesson, that was many years ago now, but it taught me a lesson not to, not to suppose what other people were thinking and actually not to worry. Because, yeah, I mean, when I'm with my son, you know, I don't dress up, we go for dinner, you know, we, I don't make a big effort. Yeah, I have, probably I'm allotted about five minutes to get ready anyway, so it's not like I have that much time. I get onto kid time, you know, it's really important. You just get onto kid time. You sleep when they sleep. You get up when they get up and you, you know, you're, you're watching everything obviously carefully because you're ultimately responsible for them. But, you know, once they're having a nap or something, you can read a book or you can do certain things that you, you know, get, get some rest time in. Or maybe if you can do what I try to do and always find a friend on holiday, then that can work too. And that can be as, as simple as sort of just engineering the kids to be in the pool at the same time together. Or maybe you start talking to, to other parents, chatting. Um, you know, be aware that some people don't want to mix when they're on holiday. They want family time, so they don't get that at home. That's why they go away. But on the other hand, you know, we've got some great, great friends that we've met when we're traveling, just me and my son. And actually, uh, two days ago, we uh, just got back from holiday. We went and we climbed the O2 with two with a couple that we met who have a son in Portugal when we were there. So, you know, we've made some great friends who are still friends now many, many years on. I think that was like five years ago we met them in Portugal when we were on our own. Yeah, also I take my parents sometimes if we travel. Um, you don't have to go abroad. You know, but if you do go abroad, then make sure you think it through. You know, make sure that you pack stuff for the plane. You know, if your child is a fussy eater, then maybe, you know, get some sandwiches before you get on the plane, make some, make a packed lunch just so they don't go hungry on the plane, because their plane food could be, I don't know about you, but hit and miss definitely with, with my son. Um, pack some toys, pack some entertainment, you know, beach toys when you go abroad can be super crazy, crazy expensive. So if you've got an old lilo, then take it with you. If you've got a bucket and spade, take it with you. You know, if your kid likes trucks, or you know, definitely like an iPad if they're a bit older, don't feel bad about that because, you know, when I go to dinner with my son, especially when he was younger, he'd quite often get up and leave me at the table and go running around or go and play in the sand or go and sit at other people's tables sometimes if he'd made a friend. And that's cool, I'd get a glass of wine and I'd have my book with me. You know, so always think ahead, be prepared. You know, don't overdo it, don't dress up if you don't want to stand out, just blend in. You know, there's ways of doing it. Um, and actually, the magic moments you can share when you're on a trip like that 
far, far outweigh any anxiety about what other people are thinking, you know? Uh, it actually, it really does. And the m moments and the memories that you have, and then coming back and putting the photos up around the house and the trips you've done, it's amazing, you know? And one, it doesn't hold you back from traveling and doing the things you want to do. I know that Emma, who wrote to me, she's a massive scuba diving fan, but she's nervous to travel that far away um, from home with her, her son. She's got one child too. But actually, you know, if you do it, it works. If you think about it, you plan it ahead, you talk to your, your child. You know, I always say to my son, look, it's just me and you, so I need you to be on the best behavior. And there's a couple of ground rules. You know, if I say, come here, I mean, come here. You know, don't run off. You know, always stay where you can see me. And, you know, let's just have fun. You know, and we're there together. And you get that understanding and your child recognizes that what you're doing is probably out of the ordinary to some of his other friends, um, but that's okay you know, and they appreciate it, and you can have a fabulous time. So, I suppose what I'm saying is be brave, you know, go and do the things you want to do, whether it's, you know, a trip to a caravan park in the, in, in the south coast of England, or maybe you want to jump on a plane and, and go somewhere not far away, or maybe you want to do what I did and do three flights to get to the Maldives. Whatever it is that's going to work for you, start small and then you can always build it up, you know, if you've got friends that want to travel, there's also lots of single parent holiday companies out there. I know I have one client who swears by them and goes on them every holiday. And she's met loads of people, really cool people, fun people. And of course, there's always other kids there then for, for the children to play with, which takes some pressure off and allows you guys to have a rest too, which is obviously super important. The last thing you wanna do is come back totally shattered and frazzled. So you gotta plan it, you gotta think ahead. These things just don't happen. You know, when you're traveling on your own with chick kids, you've got to think a bit harder probably about the kind of resort you're going to, about the setup, about what you need to take with you. And just being prepared with, you know, like a, a medicine box full of, you know, things that you would take, you know, that you may not be able to get in a foreign country. You know, hopefully you'll never get to use them, but it just having them there dials down your stress and your anxiety. Um, and, you know, ultimately have fun. You know, you're there to have fun. Don't let your mind trick you into feeling nervous or worried about what people are gonna say or think. You know, most people wouldn't even notice you. <laughs> if they do, they're probably thinking, wow, that looks really cool. So, yeah, you know, have a few phrases up your sleeve. So for example, I know in the Maldives, we went for dinner and you know, the waitress would always say, oh, table for three. And I'd look at my son and he'd look at me and go, no, just the two of us. Or, and he'd go, yeah, I've got my own Facebook friend. Um, and we joke about it, you know, and they were fine. And if you put the waitress at ease then, then she doesn't feel awkward and you don't feel awkward. And you can't take offence because I suppose it's out of the ordinary to travel on your own at these, this day and age still, maybe, you know. Um, and other people have different views of the world. So they're not trying to upset you. They're not trying to be difficult. They're not trying to embarrass you. And actually, probably they'll end up admiring you. You know, I mean, I had one of the waitresses come up at the end. She goes, oh my goodness, you guys have had such fun. And it's just been so lovely seeing the two of you together. And, you know, it is, you know, there's no stress. You don't have the same rules as, as you have at home because you're on holiday, you're a bit more relaxed and everything, you know, can be amazing. So plan it through, step up and do it. That's my advice, step up and do it. Create those magic moments. And then when you get home, create the photos and put them up around the house to remind you of what an amazing time that you had. So I hope this helps. If you have a question that you would like answered by me, then do please send me an email Put in the subject heading Sarah TV so I can filter out your email and make sure I answer it in one of my upcoming episodes. Um, and then just tell me as much as you can about your situation. I've got emails that I want to get through. I know that three or four of you had asked me about the holiday, so I've kind of grouped you all together. So I hope you recognize that I've covered all the points that you asked me in this one. But if you have any other questions, then do you jot them down, email them to me, and I will answer them in one of my upcoming shows. So thanks for joining me. If you like, the, if you like this, then please like, and subscribe to my channel, that'd be awesome. Um, I'm trying to help as many people as I can with this, so um, as many likes as possible would be amazing. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you on another episode. Thanks guys, Mwah. have a great day.